bend down and pick them up for me. <laughs> If I close my eyes and think about us, I can see the person I know I should be. Cause honestly, I don't It looks like Mars has given up on putting the guineas back where they go. Hey, guinea. I'm always amazed that some of the muddiest parts of our homestead, we have mud here about eight months out of the year, actually do turn green again in the summertime. You can see here and in our pig pen, there's a very, very light green tint as the grass is growing right back. All of the pastures that you see here, the chicken run, this goat pasture here, this pig pen here, and our goat fence in the back, my husband put up himself by hand. And many of you are probably aware, but maybe some of you aren't, we are actually putting in a really big fence around our property to help with the ever increasing feed prices in this country. We have nine and a half acres here and much of it we don't use. We just mow every year and all of the grass and nutrition just kind of goes to waste until now. This is really starting to look like a fence. This is the first fencing project that my husband has done that he hasn't really had to break his back to do. This past year, we actually were finally able to get our own tractor and our neighbor has every implement under the sun and has allowed us to borrow some very important pieces that we've needed to put this whole thing together. And one of the pieces that Levi is using today is a fence stretcher that we actually borrowed from his parents. So hopefully we can see that in action. How's it going? Well, at the end of the first bolt. This pasture is so important, not only for the impact it's gonna have on our feed bill, but it allows us an extra place to rotate our pastures and hopefully increase the health of our animals as far as their worm load and really variety of nutritional intake. I think it's going to be a really, really good thing. This was actually one spot I was a little bit worried about because the land just dips down in here. But the nature of this type of wire, this is actually called woven wire. It's got these knots here where the different wires intersect. It really helps it be flexible and it moves quite well up steep terrain. I would definitely suggest that if you're gonna be putting in any type of pasture, really consider the type of animals that you may wanna put in there in the future and think about something more sturdy like this as opposed to something like a welded wire fencing. Welded wire is a lot cheaper, but it breaks down very quickly. Even Nigerian dwarf dairy goats can do a real number on those types of fences in no time flat. Another important thing to think about too is placing the T-posts and the wire in the correct position in relation to each other. When a goat or any other animal pushes up against the fence, you want the T-posts to be able to brace the fencing and not allow the fencing to sag. If we had the fencing on the outside of the T-posts, the T-posts really wouldn't be able to offer much, if any, support at all. All of the pressure would be on these little T-post clips here, and really that's just not the point. So make sure that your fencing is on the inside of your T posts and you've got these little nubbins facing inward.
like And when this. you want to stretch it, that's what you do. Yeah. This, genius, a whole lot better than doing and undoing three big bolts. It apparently works. Very well. Good tip. That, I thought that was a door thing. No! You thought that was a door frame? I think you're a door thing. <laughs> Hi, good boy. Hi, good boy. You're a good buster boy. Damn. Damn, I'm a good buster boy. Another piece of infrastructure that's going on today, now that the greenhouse is mostly planted, is I need to set up the drip irrigation system. I actually planted and grew food all winter long without it. And that works fine when it's not, you know, 85 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the growing space at the time. But I know that I'm going to be needing to be a lot more consistent with my spring and summer garden. And I find that drip irrigation is super, super easy in situations like this where everything is laid out in rows. Some of you may have noticed that I do have a drip tape system hooked up in my raised bed garden. And while it was all right last season, it wasn't my favorite thing in that type of setting. I think drip tape can work fine in a square foot garden setting, which is what I have over there. If you put enough tape down, you kind of snake it within the bed. I didn't do that. I kind of just laid two drip tapes across the top of four foot beds and that really wasn't enough. So I have put one of these together before. There is a tiny bit of a learning curve uh, with these drip tape systems. So hopefully watching me do this will help alleviate maybe some issues that you might come across. So the system comes with this mainline tubing here. It's open on both ends. It comes with a whole bunch of connectors and valves. And inside here, this little yellow thing, that is going to be really important for placing the valves. And then we have lots and lots and lots of drip tape. See, here's that little, that little yellow tool I was talking about. It also comes with this crimping tool and we're gonna use that in just a second. So if you're thinking about getting a drip irrigation system like this, I actually bought mine from Grower Solution and they suggest that you go ahead and buy this flow control valve here that makes it so I believe that it takes the flow pressure down of your hose to 15 PSI. If your PSI is too great, it's going to blow out the ends of your hose and just spray out way more water than is necessary. So this flow regulator is super helpful and don't forget it because it doesn't come with the kits that I've seen. So this main line tubing here, it's connected to the main water line and it doesn't have any drip ports in it. It's really just a solid plastic pipe. And again, it's open on the end. The whole point of this hose here is to be able to provide consistent water pressure to each perpendicular drip line that comes off of it. So this open line is gonna have to close and it's a really, really simple system. Just gonna take one ring, bend it over, and place the other end of the tube straight in there. And that little thing, that figure eight, it basically just holds the kink for us. And it's as simple as that. And at this point, all I've done here is secure it into the ground with a couple garden staples. And this is what it looks like out here. Here is our flow regulator and it goes straight into the main line which feeds into the side. Now we're going to stick one perpendicular valve at each row along the main line. And in order to get the valve in, we're going to have to use the special tool that they included, which is gonna pierce a hole in the main line, and then we're gonna drive this end here straight into the hose here. What I would like is for the valve to come out exactly like this. So right here is where I'm gonna to wanna to place my hole. It's very basic, you're just punching a hole in it. 
okay? Just like that. Now with these kinds of systems, this part can take some muscle and some force, and that's because you want the mainline hose to have a pretty tight seal around this inlet so that you don't get leaks. This little end right here is gonna pop straight into that hole that we just made. Sounds easier than it is. There it goes, it's in. Whew, don't break a sweat. But again, it needs to be tight so that it can keep that seal. One down, five more to go. There's also several types of valves that can be purchased and many different ways to use these valves. I really like these kind. They have this little on off switch at the top. And so if I don't want to water a specific row, let's say my beans need water, but if my tomatoes get water, then they might be prone to cracking. I can then go ahead and shut off the tomato rows, but leave the bean rows on to get their water. Okay, now everything is set up to go ahead and put in the drip tape. And I have strategically placed my plants in here to be each at a drip port. And let me show you what the drip ports are. So down here at the base of this tomato plant, there is a little slit in the drip tape here. And when the pressure is on, a little bit of water is gonna steadily drip out of here and water the plant. These in this particular line of drip tape are every 12 inches. So I have my peppers every 12 inches and the tomatoes are every 24 inches. So in worrying about that spacing, um, I'm gonna want to cut the tubing to make sure that I have one of those slits right near this first plant here. And in theory, it should all line up all the way down. So I have a port here. There's also one way up here, but that's obviously not gonna stretch that far. And if I line that up, it looks like I only have to cut just a little bit off of the drip tape. We're going to be securing the drip tape over this nozzle here, and it's going to sink in past this band a tiny bit. So I'm gonna cut just a little bit off. I've gotta make sure that this threading is actually all the way open. This is part of what secures the drip tape on to the valve here. Got it open. I'm gonna slide it right over pushing it down as far as it will go. And then I'm gonna twist this. And this will thread over that drip tape and lock it into place. You can see here, there's a drip port at this plant. There's one at this plant. What I just did there was go along the row and secure the drip tape every few plants or so with some of these fabric staples just to keep it as close to the plant as I'm gonna need it and ensure that the wind isn't gonna blow it around. The drip tape comes in just one continuous row. So after each row, I'm gonna need to cut it and secure the end. So I'm gonna give myself more tubing than I'm going to need at the end of the row here. And from the roll, I'm gonna cut about an inch and a half section. And we're gonna use this piece to make sure that the end of the tubing here doesn't leak. So all I'm going to do to secure the end of the tubing is fold it over once, fold it over twice. I'm going to kind of pinch the end here so I can insert the end of the drip tape inside my little securing end tube here and this little end piece is going to hold those folds in place and it basically acts to secure that kink and not allow any more water to flow out the end. Just gonna tap that down. And this row's done. 
This is something that I probably won't have to do for another couple years in the greenhouse. This drip tape, especially under the cover of the greenhouse, is going to hold up for at least two or three years. When I need to, I can just pull it back, amend my beds, and put everything back down, and I'll be able to reuse everything, the drip tape and this weed fabric here. I really like this kind of a system. It allows me to do extra work while also watering my garden. I really am a fan of multitasking and this really helps achieve that.